What's the craziest thing you've seen unfold live on television before it could be taken off air censored? The Challenger exploding when I was in elementary school. The whole school was watching it on TV in the auditorium. Weird fact about me. I was in the exact same room at a school when the Challenger exploded and then when the first plane hit on 9 stroke 11. For the Challenger. I was in my 4th grade classroom. And for 9 stroke 11. I was a teacher in that school in that classroom. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Kanye West. I will never forget the look on Mike Myers face. That was insane. We were watching the telethon at my aunt's house after my father's funeral. It was just family sitting around after a meal kind of decompressing. We were watching but not really comprehending what was on. Until that moment. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Double quote. When I was a kid TV shows were interrupted all the time for high speed chases and police standoffs. One time a helicopter was tracking a guy who was driving through a field. The driver hopped out of his van. Comma with a shotgun. The reporter was telling the helicopter to pan away from the shot but they didn't. The driver then put the shotgun in his mouth and blew his head off on live TV. The camera cut and came back to the in-studio reporter who had a defeated WTF look on his face. I swear this led to less situations like this being shown on TV. This is so stupid. But I was a youngin when it happened. A guy was holding up a sign on the Today Show, or some national morning TV show, that said marry me Julia, or something like that. Willard Scott or Al Roker or someone went up to the guy and said tell us a little about Julia. And the guy was like nope. I'd rather marry Steve and started making out on camera with a guy next to him. The host booked it and was like ooh okay I I I I I I onto the weather. Prior to then I'd never even heard about being gay. Let alone seen anything like it. I'm not sure why that image stuck with me though it was pretty shocking at the time. It wasn't so crazy as much as the impact of it was to television. But the Janet Jackson boob was so bizarre. It seemed completely planned and everyone was unsure as to what exactly was supposed to happen. But it seemed like something that wasn't supposed to. It was all very puzzling and then the controversy started blowing up. I didn't see it. But I remember reading all about Owen Hart falling to his death on live television. If I had been watching. That easily would have been the craziest thing I've ever seen. Along with the saddest and absolute worst. After Hurricane Katrina the people stuck in Noah at the stadium and gathered on a freeway overpass dying of thirst and hungry as hell. News saying the government didn't know where people were so they couldn't drop food and water. Was surreal because the news crews literally had the people on TV with captions of their locations but nope. Both local and federal government couldn't figure it out. Yes. The no mayor A. Nagin left for Houston. Blanco the governor. Didn't understand that she had to request federal assistance. So the feds were helpless. Local government was completely inept. And it took days to get it help moving. I had relatives on a roof while Blanco was in a stupidity coma. I wish I could provide the link. But it was a NHL game and one player fell and his skate cut the jugular of his opponent. Blood squirted out like a hose. Staining the ice. Sending him immediately to the locker room and a full recovery was had. When I went to look it up the next day. I clicked on the first thing without checking and ended up with my first computer virus. Apparently. Sick fucks like to FCK with other sick fucks looking up someone else's demise. Lesson learned. This just happened a month ago. Not sure if it was national news but. The Cincinnati Reds announcer. During the first game of a double header. Got caught on a hot mic using a gay slur. I had to rewind it to make sure I heard him correctly. During the next couple of hours. The sports world blew up on the internet. And he, presumably oblivious, finished calling the first game. Then started the second game. Then around the fourth inning. He faces the camera and gives an apology for what he said. Told the viewing audience he might never be back. And during his apology. A player hits a home run. And he calls the home run during his apology. And then he was gone forever. Not exactly a non air suicide or whatever. But it was an incredibly bizarre situation. 
lots of other answers on here that are the same as what I would say too. But one I haven't seen is Dale Earnhardt SR's death in the last turn of the last lap at Daytona. It was crazy because it looked like such an innocuous crash, even watching live. It didn't seem like a big deal, and so shocking when we learned he had passed away. I really enjoyed rooting for the number 3 car. After that my interest in NASCAR pretty much dwindled and went away. And when they tried to ask Kenny Schrader what he saw when he went up to the car. Just chilling. Kenny knew Dale was gone. His eyes looked haunted. That time Randy Johnson vaporized a bird with his pitch. I was at a sports bar with my parents and half paying attention to the game when I saw the ball explode into a big poof of feathers. He has a photography business now. And uses a dead bird as the logo. I'm not even kidding. I swear I've seen it but I've never found it again. David Letterman was hosting The Tonight Show and he had a pair of ferrets on his desk. The zoo guy was talking about them and they freaked out and started running around his desk. Their leash got caught in the microphone so they started going in circles. Defecating the whole time. Even splashing David. They went to commercial and afterwards the ferrets were gone and David was cleaned up. I had never laughed so hard. The reporters reporting live on 9-11. Covered in dirt. Crying swearing. Telling it as it was, utterly terrifying. I would have never considered recording something so horrific. But now that it's all gone I wish I could go back and see that raw humanity again. A lot of the original broadcasts are on YouTube. It's weirdly fascinating to hear some of things they said in retrospect, depending on the channel. A lot of speculation and unconfirmed rumors were broadcast. And you can draw a line to a lot of the crazy conspiracy theories. I was watching a live broadcast in Texas. The reporter was saying that every year the police have to burn all of the drugs that they seize in all their drug busts. It was mostly huge piles of marijuana. Probably a 10 foot high or so pile. The reporter was in the foreground and she mentioned that most of the police were off duty and volunteering to be there so that the blaze wouldn't get out of control. So all these police and this pile of weed are in the background and it is lit. As the pile starts roaring into a big bonfire. Even I could tell that they were standing way too close to it. At least 30 or 40 police officers all standing really close to this bonfire with their backs to the camera. So this reporter decides to ask one of them a question and walks over and taps one of them on the shoulder. This high AF police officer turns around as this reporter is asking him something and he looks directly at the camera with these squinty red eyes and goes why the fuck? When I was a kid I was watching the news and saw some people in Sarajevo, I think. Comma being pulled off the back of a truck and shot. Teenage boys and men. Never forgot it. It was daytime and I think it might have been live. The BBC or something but it has stayed with me ever since. I used to live near a lot of Bosnian refugees who were then school kids. All of them had PTSD and or depression. They had seen their dads and older male relatives murdered while their moms and older female relatives were raped, or, they experienced it too. That war was pure hell for the survivors. Ashley Simpson's SNL lip sync or quidjig. It wasn't quite live for us, we recorded it on VHS and watched it the next day. But back when it aired. It was close enough. We watched it happen. And were able to rewind the tape and watch it again. The Louisville basketball player who broke his leg on live television or Gordon Hayward breaking his ankle during the first game of the season a couple years ago. I remember watching that game live and chuckling when I saw all of the Louisville players on the floor. I remember thinking it was a three pointer how the hell did Louisville players collide with one another close to the paint. I had no idea the severity of the injury until they showed that replay. It was weird I never even noticed Kevin Ware, the injured player, as it happened live. I think that in the Austin Collie hit playing against the Eagles, it really looked like he died. Were the two most disturbing sports moments I remembered watching live. Tyson biting Hollerfield's ear. I sat in front of Tyson in a movie theater shortly after. Teenage me cupped my hands behind my ears most of the movie. No clue what I expected lol. Movie was the Newton boys. When Henry Surtees was hit and killed by a wheel mid-race in the Formula 2. It just happened so quickly you couldn't process what you'd actually seen. 
Felipe Massa's accident at Hungary GP in the zeros. You just saw a flash of something that he was nose first and the tire barrier with the accelerator still depressed. He eventually recovered but his eyebrow never moved again. Watching the luge athlete from Georgia lose control and run off the track in a practice run during the Olympics. It didn't look super gruesome on TV but they showed the footage and you just immediately knew he was f head up. He was going 90 miles per hour. Zero body protection. I was pretty young so it was just a crazy example of our own mortality. R.I.P. Nodder. Ito I guess it wasn't censored but it was the first shocking death footage I was exposed to on air. I don't know if anyone else mentioned it. But in the UK when I was a kid. There was a show on Saturday night called The Late Late Breakfast Show. Each week there was a spot where they'd get someone to perform a live stunt each week. Hosted by a guy called Neil Edmonds, inventor of Deal or No Deal. Among other things. In the past they had done really dangerous stuff like pulling someone out of an exploding building with a helicopter. One stunt involved a guy bungee jumping from an exploding platform. And he died live on air. On national British prime time TV. There was an episode of Just Shoot Me during the late 90s about an animal puppeteer guy who's hot for Gina and makes a Gina giraffe puppet that resembled her. During the end credits the mayor puppet reads a statement. I recently engaged in an affair with Gina giraffe that was improper. In fact it was wrong. And I deeply regret it. I hope we can all put this behind us and get on with the business of running Magic Town. It took me a minute. But finally realized they were spoofing Clinton's confession about Monica Lewinsky. Also watched the repeat a few months later waiting for it. But it was suspiciously removed. When I was around 7 years old in Panama City. Florida two teenagers hacked into the local news feed. We were in the living room watching the news and it started to break up and then went to snow. Before my dad could get up to mess with the rabbit ears. The signal resolved to show two kids in a bedroom looking at something off screen. Then they looked at the camera. Once they realized they were on live TV. They started screaming and hugging each other and jumping around yelling we did it. We did IT. Ah. Double quote. After a few seconds the signal resolved and went back to the newscaster who apologized for the disruption. Then they just went back to reporting the news like nothing happened. Right after Kobe Bryant died. The local news was showing clips of him playing basketball while reporting on it but it was clips of his worst plays, missed layups, bad passes, air balls. True story I was attending a one year old birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese and saw the news first. When I broke it to everyone no one believed me then all of the phones starting ringing with the sportscaster sound and the whole adult party had to pretend to be fine for the kids even though we were all f-ked up about it. Chris Benoit's tribute from WWE before he was found guilty of killing his family. As a long time wrestling fan. Benoit was one of my favorites and that entire week was a roller coaster ride for me. First. I hear that him and his family passes away. Then WWE does this tribute show. Then you see the heinous crimes Benoit did and after that. WWE erase him from the company like B never existed. Left me sad. Confused and angry. The video from Louisville when their BLM protests were in the early days this year. Cop point blank shot at a reporter with pepper balls and didn't even try to hide it. Took aim and shot knowing he was on camera. The reporter's yelp was terrified sounding before she realized it was only pepper bullets. I was watching the news and someone called someone else a fucker. I was watching TV in Culver's waiting for my food and an employee came around and turned off all the TVs. A few months after that ever Culver's I walked into had a loop of their own ads playing and Instagram pictures people had tagged with covers. Just a kid in the 80s. Don't remember what year but before 86. Watching TV when a news briefing came on. Man walks out with a manila envelope and briefly introduces himself. Then quickly opens the envelope. Pulls out a gun and places the barrel in his mouth. POW. Brain and blood splatter on the drape behind him. That's all I remember. Don't even recall my parents saying anything about it later. Hanging out with some friends at a bar so we could watch the UFC on a giant screen. 
and then seeing Anderson Silva's leg snap in half like a twig from really up close was a something. And then about half a year later, Tyrone Spong does almost the exact same thing at Glory. Also saw that one live. I have a hard time watching leg kicks getting checked now. I'm still always afraid the leg will snap. In the 90s, MTV was on in the background. And downtown Julie Brown was hosting some sort of pool party weekend thing. They were going to commercial. So as she was talking to the camera. Saying what was going to be going on after the commercial. Some dudes started getting closer. And started grinding up against her. Just as she was done. And before they cut to the commercial. She pushed the dude off her and she yelled get the FCK off of me. Double quote. I live in Ohio and was watching Charles Ramsey's, the guy who rescued Amanda Berry and the other missing women, interview live as it happened and my husband and I lost it laughing. We loved him instantly. I remember not paying attention and then seeing him thinking this is the guy who found them. It can't be. He's so casual about it. Then he said he famous line and I said. Oh yeah. This is the guy who found them and he's awesome. Double quote.